All right, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do the IBR stop grind on a late model c -Doo. Um This is more prevalent in the 22 and up models, but it also works on previous year models as well. Um, and essentially what this mod will do is give you extended VTS range, uh, but it'll also help gain an additional mile per hour or two on the top end. Um, in this case, this c had a, um, the IBR stops weren't ground down far enough from the factory. Um, so when I did this process, I was able to gain um, around four miles per hour. Um, and you'll see why in just a moment. Um, but essentially, what we're going to do here is grind the stops that determine the height of your IBR bucket, which in turn determines the height of your VTS range. Um, obviously, with more trim up, you gain a little bit more top end. Uh, in terms of speed because the front of your ski will face uh, it'll kind of point out of the water compared to trim down where it'll kind of hunt down um, for those of you that don't know uh, I, I don't remember the exact years but it was either 2022 or 2023 um, the IBR stops came from factory where <clears throat> they, they didn't allow enough ETS range um, and this this is my ski here you can kind of see from the side profile that now that I did the fix, uh, the trim is more of a up angle. Um, the bucket is higher. When I first bought the ski, this bucket was resting around here, um, and the jet was almost straight out. So it wasn't it wasn't trimming up as much as it could. Um, so I did this process, and I was able to gain four miles per hour. Uh, that's that's kind of on the higher end for this. Most skis you'll gain about a mile an hour or two. Uh, it really just depends, but. Uh, for something so easy, that's uh, worth giving it a shot. So, in order to do this, all you'll need is a 10 millimeter socket, 13 millimeter socket, a metal file, and you will need some kind of software, uh, whether it's Buds, CanDo Pro, um, or the Map Tuner with the Home Service can also do it um, to do the IBR recalibration. Because essentially, once you do what I'm about to show you you'll need to recalibrate the IBR so that it knows where the new range is. Um, if you don't have diagnostic software, you can bring it to a dealer and they will do it for you. Um, or you can use any, uh, there's a couple services where they'll send out a, like a rental unit to you, they'll perform the service and then you can send it back. Um, so it really just depends. But let's get started and I'll show you what this is all about. All right, so the first thing we need to do is put the bucket all the way down. So we're going to use the IBR override function. Um, it's very easy to use. All you need to do is hold the reverse all the way in, press the button to wake the ski up. I'm gonna wait for it here. And it's going to say, it's in IBR override mode, press mode to confirm, just like that. And now we're going to hold the trim down button, just like that. And you'll hear the IBR, I'm not sure if you can hear that or not, but it is going down. And it's all the way down now, we can let go. And if we go to the back here, we'll see that the bucket is now all the way down. So we're good to go, let's move on to the next step. All right, and now that the bucket is down, we have easy access to the IBR actuator, which is right here, and that is attached to a 13 millimeter socket. So we're gonna remove that, and we're also gonna remove the 10 millimeter uh, steering nozzle bolt as well. All right, now the steering is free. The next part is to remove the two 13 millimeters that are holding in the steering assembly. Okay, now that the steering assembly is free, we're gonna go ahead and just remove that. And now that the steering mechanism is out of the way, uh, we're going to need to do the IBR override to bring the trim all the way up just to get the actuator out of the way uh, because when it's in the down position, uh, we're not gonna be able to get the full height of this mechanism here. 
So just like before, we're going to hold in the brake, wake the ski up, wait for the screen to say IBR override, press mode, mode to confirm. And now this time we're just going to go full trim up. Just to get that actuator out of the way. And that's it, you just let go and that'll lock it in place. All right, and now that we can see that the actuator is in the retractor position, we can get the full range of the IBR bucket. So this ski has already been done, but I'm gonna go through the process again, just to show you. Uh, but prior to this uh, modification, the full height of my bucket was just about here. Um, and after I did the grind, I was able to get it up here, uh, which if you take a look at the bucket, the the IBR bucket itself, the reverse bucket, is mechanically connected to the trim. It's all part of the same system. So if your bucket can only travel up to a certain amount, that means your trim range on the upper position is also limited. Um, so essentially what we're going to do here is, all you need to do is take a note of where your bucket stops and just reference that. Take a picture of it, just so you know what the before and after is. Um, but for now, we're going to go ahead and remove the reverse bucket as well. So we have a 13 millimeter there and a 13 millimeter there. Okay, and now that the bucket is removed, we can see where we need to get to. Uh, and that's what these are. These are the IBR stops. So the edge of the IBR here and here will hit the IBR stops, which is part of the ride plate. Uh, so from the factory, they stick out just a little too far, uh, which limits the amount of range that the IBR bucket has. And a simple fix for that is to quite literally just take a metal file just like this and grind away at these stops um, now there's a trick to it, so I'm going to show you. I'll just grind a little bit. This is essentially what you're going to be doing on both sides, just like that, just like that. And you want to repeat this process until you can get this IBR bucket to almost touch the hole. You want this part of the bucket here to come within like a quarter inch of this part of the hole. Uh, and the way you test that is just grind some material away, attach the bucket. Uh, you don't have to put anything else together, just put the bolts back in the bucket so you can see the range. Rotate it up, see how close it gets to the hole, and you want to try to get it within a quarter inch. Um, so it takes some trial and error. You're going to have to uh, attach the bucket, test the range, take it off, do some more filing, just like so. Put the bucket, bucket back on and just get it as close to that hole as you can. You don't want it to touch, you just want to get it pretty close. Once you get it pretty close, then you can put the um, start putting the ski back together, which is what I'm going to do right now because I already did the grind on my ski. So I'll show you the next process, which is how you do the IBR recalibration for the ski to realize its new potential. All right, and just like we said, I'm going to go ahead and reattach the IBR bucket. Um, just make sure you're using Loctite when you put this stuff back on. Um, the last thing you want is for any of these bolts to come loose. Uh, just make sure you're using the removable Loctite, Loctite Blue or something, a different brand name. As long as it's removable, you'll be good to go. Don't overdo it, just put a small amount on there. The next thing we're gonna put on is the steering nozzle. I covered this in another video, but you wanna make sure that this part is on top. Your nozzle is facing outwards and your rollers um, they wanna to be top side. So just make sure you put it in that way.
So now that we have the steering assembly back in, the last part is to just reattach the IBR actuator. Um, with this, you can either put it back in with the trim all the way back up, or you can bring the arm back out doing the IBR override and attach it when it's down. Um, it's a lot easier to do it when it's down because the IBR is right here, so you can easily get to it. Um, for me, I've done this a million times. I'm just gonna do it in the trim up position. It's a little bit more complicated because it's harder to get to the bolt, um, but I'm just gonna do it that way. All right, so this next part, of course, will vary depending on which software you're using to do the recalibration, um, or if, if you're even doing it yourself. Um, I have buds, so I'm gonna show you how to do it in there. Um, if you have CanDo Pro, or if you're using the Reva Map Tuner uh, with the home service application, uh, it's pretty self-explanatory in those. Um, or if you're using an online service that will send you a module to use, they'll usually do it for you. Um, but in BUDS, this is how you'll do it. So after you get your MPI connected to the vehicle and you load it up into BUDS, um, you want to go to the functions page, auto calibrate IBR, and then just click run. This is going to give you the process. It's going to say what the current degree angle is, what the motor angle is. You can manually actuate the IVR from here. Um, but we are just going to click on auto calibrate. Gate is attached. So we'll see what it does here. And you'll see it's basically going to try to find what trim down is and what trim up is. Um, and you'll see that this pretty much finishes it. That's it. That's pretty much all there is to it. And you'll notice just how close we got it's kind of hard to see, but it is very close. Not quite touching, but it's very close. Um, and like I said before, compared to what the range was before, which was uh, nowhere near as steep as that was, uh, it's significantly more trim up, which gives me better launching capability. Um, you know, if I want to do wheelies or whatever from wave jumping, uh, but more importantly, it gives me better top end speed. Um, so. Since this one was so bad, when I originally had a uh, tune done to the ski, this is a 325, um, I was only hitting 81, 82, uh, and then after I did this IBR grind and recalibration, I was able to get up to 85, which is the highest I've been able to get. So, um, you'll see here, it never really tells you when it's finished, it just says, you know, after the motor stops, you're good to go, so we'll go ahead and close out of that. And that's pretty much it. That's all you need to do. Um, it's unfortunate that, you know, some software, um, or, you know, you can't do an IVR recalibration without the software. Um, but, you know, those of you that are doing your own work, you're most likely going to have the software that you need. Or, it's, at the very least, you can rent one online and have uh, one of the uh, online techs send it out a module for you to use. Um, I can drop names if anybody needs any help. Uh, also, I'm located in southeast Pennsylvania, so if anybody needs to have this done in that area, uh, feel free to send me a message and uh, I can absolutely take care of you. Uh, but aside from that, that's pretty much it.